a progressive congressional candidate, went on Fox News with Jesse Waters, to be clear. And oftentimes, Jesse Waters will bring on lefties who he thinks he can humiliate. We saw this with the moderator from the anti-work subreddit, right? Where um, he brought them on and was making fun of them. And and it wasn't the best interview, right? Admittedly so. Um, Not the worst ever. It was just a random person who was awkward, wasn't necessarily trained to be on camera. But Jesse Waters wanted to showcase how insane this lefty was. So he's going to do this with congressional candidate Rebecca Parson. And um, in my opinion, it does not go as planned because he's going to try to make a fool of her. But the thing about Rebecca and most progressive congressional candidates is she knows her shit. Campaign ads keep getting more and more creative every year. And this year is no different. Democratic Socialist congressional candidate Rebecca Parson is running in Washington's 6th congressional district And she recently made waves with this in-your-face ad. Take a look. Billionaires tell us you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Well, f*** that. Imagine you proposed a housing for all bill in Congress. Then imagine you, me, and a million of our friends took action and occupied empty houses nationwide. They couldn't ignore us. No one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. Are you ready? Parson says she's okay. A- let me just pause it right there. So, what she is advocating for in this ad is mass civil disobedience on a scale that Bernie Sanders talked about in the event he were to become president. Yeah, this is mega based. I love this because if you get to Congress and you kind of give up on the movement that got you elected, then you're not going to be very effective. But if you bring your movement to Congress with you in the same way that Shama Sawant did in Seattle City Council, you could be unstoppable. And so she's going to encourage people to protest, do civil disobedience, and take action. Make it so you can't be ignored. And this, to me, is based. But this little snowflake right here is triggered. He's triggered, and he thinks that this is bad, and he's going to use that incredibly good ad to try to make fun of her. Not gonna go according to plan though. Actually occupied empty buildings before, like houses going into foreclosure, and she's instructed homeless people to occupy businesses too, like the Fife Motel in 2020, where they refused to leave or pay after the first night. Some of her other plans she wants to enact if she- Okay, if you don't want them to do that, Jesse, what do you propose? Just let them continue to sleep on the streets? I mean, this is the thing. Uh, These conservatives will scoff at any recommendations from progressives when it comes to homelessness and the housing crisis. They'll scoff at everything. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't like that. But they never propose their own alternative solutions. And the reason for that is because they have no alternative solutions. Homeless people, you know, if they had their way, they just Thanos snap them away. They don't acknowledge that these are human beings that, like all of us, need to be housed it's a human right need to be fed it is a human right but they treat them as if they're feral animals you know a stray house cat just let them sleep on the streets it really says a lot about them are to raise the minimum wage to 30 dollars an hour abolish ice because the current immigration system is quote a combination of systemic racism the prison industrial complex and corporate greed true She also wants to repeal federal laws that stop unlawful entry and re-entry of migrants and cash bail. Okay, I wasn't sure what that referred to. Um, If he was trying to make it seem as if uh, unlawful entry to homes, because I wasn't sure if he was going to say she wants people to be able to break into your home to scare the suburbanites. But of course, that's not what she is uh, advocating for. And her policy is a humane based immigration policy. Hey, if you're seeking asylum you can apply for asylum. And these are all good things, by the way. But one-time cancellation of all student debt and pass the Green New Deal. Let's bring in the Democratic Socialist candidate for Congress, Rebecca Parson. Now, real quick before it starts, I'm going to promise to try to not pause it as much, but he says Democratic Socialist a lot, and he's trying to use this as a pejorative. But she doesn't take this as a pejorative. It's a good thing, right? But he knows who his audience is. 85-year-old geriatrics were watching and scoffing at the television. This socialist wants to take my house. 
Shut the fuck up. Holy shit. Okay, so any house, any structure, any building. Yes, you're saying your house, Jesse. Your house in particular. Yes. We're going to take it. Doesn't that seem a little dangerous? Well, I'm not calling on anybody to break the law. I'm just pointing out the fact that there are 600,000 homeless people in this country, 40,000 homeless veterans, and one in five hom homeless people are kids. Meanwhile, we have 28 empty homes for every homeless person. So I'm calling on all of us to think about the empty homes that are owned by corporations like BlackRock, like Zillow, like the banks that are owned by those companies, those large corporations, and not being used for what they're intended for, which is actually housing people. Yeah. These mega corporations buy up these homes. They drive up the prices. They're the reason why we have a housing crisis, among other things. But they're one of the key drivers of these insane uh, housing prices. You know, so um, what she's saying here is sub substantive. It's valuable. But if a bank owns a house that's foreclosed, someone that wants the house is able to buy it, but they can't buy it if there's a homeless person in there. What happens well, if again, they move in and some guy's just sleeping on the floor? <laughs> well, I'm calling on I'm calling on us to think about buildings that have been empty uh, for a while that are owned by corporations. You're not having a lot of buyers coming looking at them. They're just sitting empty, and there are a lot of houses like that, both in places like here in Washington State and across the country. And so I think that in the richest country on earth, we should not have anybody who's homeless living on this street, especially not 40,000 veterans, especially not 120,000 kids. Yeah. Now, real quick, I, I've got to comment on the B-roll here. They're showing you this b-roll because they want you to think of homeless people as being gross and dirty right and um look this fence is broken they're living in this area maybe they shouldn't be there but if you're a human being that thinks this about other human beings you have to acknowledge that that is a disgusting flaw that you need to fight past because when you see these images of people sleeping on the streets, it should conjure up at least some level of compassion. Because picture yourself in their predicament. Picture yourself sleeping in a tent, trying to find a way to survive on the streets when everywhere you go, you're not welcomed. There's literally architecture built to keep homeless people away. So imagine if you were in this predicament. Imagine how awful that would be, how every day struggling to survive would be miserable. But Fox News does this. They show this B-roll of homeless people because they want their viewers to be disgusted. But it shouldn't disgust you. If it disgusts you, you need to think hard about your morals. And you should have some fucking compassion. I agree. I don't know if that's the right way to go about the homeless issue. What about ICE? You want to abolish ICE? Who's going to deport all the criminal illegal aliens? Now, I could give you my commentary, but she's going to say exactly what I'm thinking. Well, actually, decades ago, even during the Reagan era, uh, this was before ICE, and we managed the immigration system fine. I think there's existing, you know, pre-ICE law enforcement that can deal with immigration, but at the same time... Wait, well, what do you mean? There's... Who would that be? Well, for example, customs... Local police, Customs and Border Patrol. Um, there's also but the local legal police way to can't seek handle asylum. immigration law. You need ICE because you got to get these people out of the country that are dangerous, right? I don't. We managed fine before ICE, and what I'm really concerned about is the fact that all across the country, including in my district, there are 28 homes, empty homes for every homeless person. Why do we have veterans sleeping on the street who right. want to serve their country? And now they can't even find a place to live. And so I'm asking people to think about this so this situation, this problem we have. Politicians just pay lip service to it. They say they're going to do something about it, and they don't. They act like the problem is way too complicated to solve. Meanwhile, it just gets worse and worse and worse. We actually, in Tacoma, had people who were encamped on the site of an encampment from the Great Depression 100 years ago, then it was called a Hooverville, now it's called a Tent City. So if in 100 years we couldn't solve this problem and it's only gotten worse, we need to take a different way of looking at this issue. We need yeah. to look at all these empty I, I agree, homes I have agree that the, in them. I agree the politicians have paid lip service to dealing with the homeless. I just don't know if migrating into abandoned buildings is the best way. You also wanted to... Okay, I have to pause it right here because I want you to acknowledge that she's winning not that this is a debate, 
But he is not getting out of this what he wants to get out of this. Because if she was saying something so preposterous, he would have a rebuttal. But she'll say something and then he moves on. Okay, so what about this then? What about that? He's trying so hard to find something that he can do a gotcha on. But she's not giving it to him because everything she's doing is substantive. And in fact, she said things that appeal to him. Oh, well, I agree that politicians are paying lip service, but I just don't know if your solution is, uh, is the one to go with. Okay, but what solution do you have? You're not coming up with jack fucking shit. So this is really important. And this is how you can tell that a propagandist isn't getting the value that he wants out of this segment. And this is true for any Fox News host. When they bring on a lefty, and they say something, if they move on immediately, that is evidence that you've got them. They have no talking points to rebut what you're saying. It's true for Jesse Waters. It's true for anyone else, Tucker Carlson as well. Because if he can actually make her look foolish, he'd stay on one subject for the entire segment, but he's not doing that. So he's trying to find something else. Now, my favorite part is, I'm not sure if this is next, but he's going to try to do a gotcha and she smacks that shit down and, and just, it's, it's brilliant. Raise the minimum wage to $30 an hour. Do you think that might help with inflation? <laughs> well, uh, actually some studies have found that 60% of inflation is due to corporate price gouging. Boom! And with the $30 minimum wage, I realize that's much higher than it is right now. But if you look at the MIT living wage calculator, yeah. all across the country, not just in blue states, high cost blue states like Washington, all across the country, counties in Michigan, Arkansas, Mississippi, $30 is the minimum living wage for an adult to be able to support a child. And if we restructured the way we do incentives with the government, for example, the government has given over $4 billion in subsidies to Elon Musk. But when was the last time they gave a subsidy to a small business owner? I'm a small business owner myself. And if we had the government subsidizing small business owners What's your business? to pay their employees a living wage, what, what, that would go do, a long way. Do you pay $30 an hour? I do, yeah. You do? Ah, uh, so good! Because he was expecting her to say, I don't. But she does. She lives her principles. And she did exactly what she needed to do. Oh, you think that's going to help out with inflation? Actually, motherfucker, 60% of inflation comes from corporations, corporate greed. So what is he going to do? He's going to end this segment because it's hurting him more than it's hurting her. Do you know if other people pay $30 an hour for minimum wage, they might not have a business after that. But that might be what you want because then they can go out of business and then the homeless people can move into the old building. <laughs> Listen. Uh, Absolutely not. All right, no. Rebecca, I got to go. This Doesn't give him anything. Thing. I think we would agree to disagree. But good luck in your race, and I'm not sure if you're going to win, but if you do win, God bless you. And God bless the people <laughs> in Washington. You. Thank you. He's trying so hard to clown on her, but she shuts it down. No, absolutely not. And this is what you have to do. You have to be very assertive and aggressive with these propagandists because he's trained. He knows exactly how to try to make fools of his guests. He's been doing this for over a decade now, but she won't let him have anything. And what she's saying here is the truth. Like a lot of people are afraid to say the minimum wage should be higher, $20, $25, $30 an hour, uh, because, oh my God, think of the small businesses. Okay, you've got to understand that these businesses, like if you're an owner of a small business, I don't know that his definition would be the same as mine, but um, if you expect to make a living off of your business, you are absolutely dumb if you don't expect your employees to also want to make a living off of that same business why do you get to make a living why do you get to be able to afford rent off of this business when your employees aren't going to have that same expectation to your understanding so you should be able to have a luxurious life from this business because you started it but the employees that you hire they can work a full-time uh, work for you full-time and still not afford their fucking rent no. So what we're seeing here is a reshaping of society where workers in mass are rising up and they're saying we have power. They're asserting their voice. And that is really incredible. And people like Jesse Waters hate that because they don't know how to counter that. Tucker Carlson, I believe, is just ignoring the unionization movement in this country because, you know, you can't LARP as somebody who is pro-worker or a populist if you're shitting on unionization and worker rights movement because that is the most populist thing 
that you can support, right? But I mean, workers are realizing that this relationship between them and their employers is incredibly abusive in many instances. It's a power imbalance. At any second, an employer like that can pull the rug out from underneath you and you could lose everything if they choose to cut your hours. Like at the jobs that I've worked at, if you didn't uh, work to their standards, then they would cut your hours. Um, and I was a manager at Blockbuster, um, and I talk about Blockbuster a lot, but I was actually like the general manager, the store manager. And my regional manager would instruct me to cut the hours of any worker who did not do uh, enough to produce sales, right? So we sold like movie bundles, candy bundles, and anyone who didn't generate enough revenue, we had to basically cut their hours. Um, and if I didn't cut their hours, then I would be fired potentially. So they force you in this predicament to treat workers like cogs in the machine. And if they don't produce profits for you, then you disregard them. That is incredibly unstable and it's an abusive relationship. And that's not all. I mean, think about how your employer controls every aspect of your life, controls what you should wear, controls uh, the way you speak. It's fucking insane. And if you don't live up to their standards, they can penalize you, right? At Blockbuster, we had to answer the phone by saying, thanks for calling Blockbuster, where the best in movies meets the best in TV. My name is Mike. How can I help you? That long fucking thing. And you had to say it because if the district manager called, then you'd get bitched out. So they control everything. It's a fucking authoritarian dictatorship at these jobs. And finally, workers are saying, you know what? Fuck off. Now, because there's a worker shortage, because of the pandemic and whatnot, you have to be more competitive. You've got to pay me more money. I'm not going to work for $12 an hour dealing with these fucking Karens during a pandemic. If you want me to work, pay me more. If not, go out of business. You don't get to have a business if you can only survive by exploiting the labor of workers. If you want to survive off this business, your workers do too, period. So uh, Rebecca, kudos to you. I've had her on my show, I believe twice, maybe three times. And she is an incredibly impressive candidate. And if you live in her district, support her, go vote for her. Yeah, I got fired from uh, Petland discounts because I had uh, lip piercings. Isn't that insane? They get to literally control the way that you express yourself. Like, think about this. The U.S. government can't even control. Hit my microphone. The U.S. government can't even tell you how to dress. I mean, Republicans want to, right, when it comes to gender expression. But, you know, the federal government... They can't control how you dress. They can't say you're not allowed to have that nose ring. You're not allowed to have tattoos. But your employer can? We're giving our employers more power than the federal fucking government? Is that not insane? I got fired for being disabled. Exactly. So it's an abusive relationship where you're exploited. And finally, people are saying, fuck that. $25 an hour minimum wage. $30 an hour minimum wage. Higher in some areas of the country. You have to set a bare minimum and then attach it to, you know, the cost of living in certain areas. But I'm sorry, you know, it's not necessarily just Jesse Waters, but the generation who was able to purchase a home, a car, put themselves through college while working part time at a fucking Jiffy Lube should not be scoffing at the idea of a $30 an hour minimum wage. So I'm glad that workers are standing up. And if you're a true populist, then you've got to support unionization. Any right winger who purports to be a populist, and this is a little bit of a tangent, but any right winger who says they're a populist, ask them what their thoughts are on unionization. And if they support it, they're a true populist. If they don't, they're frauds. Any politician like Josh Hawley who claims to be a populist, see how many times he votes against unions and workers. That tells you he's a fraud. Stand for workers. Exactly. Exactly. County by county minimum wage tethered to three times medium rent price. Yeah, absolutely. We can acknowledge that, you know, the cost of living will vary depending on where you live, but there's got to be a federal minimum and you have to tie regional wages to the cost of living. That's the only way. Otherwise, people are going to be perpetually struggling to keep up, living paycheck to paycheck. And I'm sorry, in the richest country on the planet, we can do a little bit better than just having people barely get by.